One of the hardest parts of integration problems is figuring out what method to use in order to actually integrate it. For example, two of the most common integration methods are use substitution or integration by substitution and integration by parts. And it can be really hard at times to figure out which of those two you should actually apply to any given integration problem. Well, I recently discussed this in quite a bit of detail in one of my recent Monday night live streams, which I'm doing every Monday night at five Pacific, eight Eastern. And I think you're gonna find it really helpful. So I wanted to show you the portion of that live stream where I talked about how to choose between use substitution and integration by parts. If that sounds good to you, be sure to stick around to the end and hit that subscribe button down below as well, because I'm gonna be going over how to finish these problems that I'm gonna be talking about in my next few videos that are going to be coming out later this week. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into it and I'll show you exactly how you can figure out whether you should be applying use substitution or integration by parts. When you look at an integration problem, you know, you're you're given something like this where they would just say, you know, find the integral of this function basically. So they would just have the integral of x over x squared plus one all squared dx, for example. And you're looking at this trying to think about what integration method you know about that you can apply to this problem in order to actually find this integral. Well, when it comes to deciding between u substitution and integration by parts, there's a couple of main things you want to look for within the function that you're trying to integrate in order to, you know, kind of give away that integration by parts or u substitution might actually work. Now, the kind of tough thing with these problems or really any math problem sometimes you have to just try something and see if it works and it might not work and that sucks you know it feels like a waste of time or whatever that you you know go through a whole problem write out all these steps just to get to the end and find out that what you tried did not work at all that really is you know a challenging thing to that a lot of people don't like about learning math but unfortunately sometimes that's just part of it but through that process, you'll start to recognize these patterns, um, you know, more and more easily. Hopefully with this video, I'll be able to show you how to recognize those patterns more easily right off the bat. So you don't have to go through that experimental process quite as long or quite as much. Um, but, you know, if you're really unsure, there's nothing wrong with just going with what you think is right and see how it works out. Might work out, might not. If it doesn't, then you know to go back and try something different. But let's take this problem here, for example. We are looking at this and we're trying to think, you know, use substitution or integration by parts. Which are we going to use? Well, there's kind of one main thing about each of those methods that is definitely the first place you want to start with each of them. So with use substitution, for example, let's start with that. You're always going to want to, well, just thinking about the actual process of u substitution, obviously the process is going to be to choose a u, which is going to be some part of what the function is. Usually there are certain kind of weird instances of, instances of u substitution where you're going to do something else. Those are a little bit more tricky and not really, they're not really as um, repeatable or applicable to a vast you know, variety of different problems. So the main ones that you want to be sure you know how to do are the ones where, uh, you know, you have to choose your U, which is going to be something within this function itself. And you usually want to choose your U so that the derivative of U or DU DX or whatever your variable is, in this case, we have a DX here. So it's DU DX, where this is somewhere else in your function. So d the derivative of whatever you choose your u to be is somewhere else in the function. So these are kind of the, the what you want to look for when you're trying to think about how you would apply u substitution. Let's think about now integration by parts. Integration by parts is only going to be usable when you have a product of two things. So, it, you know, if you think about the actual uh, the actual formula for integration by parts, basically what it what it tells you how to do is to convert the integral of u times dv into something else that should hopefully give you an easier integral. That's the idea. But looking at just kind of the format of this, we have a u times dv. So this, the formula immediately tells you we can only apply integration by parts when we have a product of two simpler functions. 
So if you don't have a product of two simpler functions, you're not going to be able to use use or integration by parts. I'm sorry. You know, typically with any sort of a problem where you're looking for a product of two things, you may be able to do some manipulation of the function to get it to be a product of two things. Like this, for example, we could think about rewriting this as the integral of x times one over x squared plus one all squared. So now it is a product. Um, so, you know, right off the bat, just based on the fact that we have a fraction, we don't necessarily want to rule out integration by parts right off the bat. However, I will say, typically when you have a fraction like this, this is generally not going to be the easiest method. It definitely could be. You definitely don't want to rule it out right off the bat. It is possible. But I'm just saying, usually um, there's going to be something easier that you can do. So looking at this example that we have here, thinking about which of these two methods is going to be applicable. What we can actually kind of think about, and we don't want to go all the way through the whole process of doing u substitution or doing integration by parts all the way through. But what we can think about very easily is how would we start? What would we do for the very first step? Let's say we wanted to do either one of those two options. How would we start? Because just looking at how you would start is actually probably going to give you a pretty good idea of which one's going to be easier to do. So let's think about that. If we were to pretend just for a sec, we're going to do u substitution. We want to look for some u. We could call our u something that is in this function where that thing's derivative or that thing's derivative times some constant would be fine as well, is also in our function. So I, I did recently do another u substitution video where I kind of showed you this process of laying out all the different possible u options that we might be able to do and then kind of looking to see if that thing's derivative is also somewhere in the function. So just kind of going based on that, that idea, you're never going to want to say u equals x. So that's all that's already eliminated. That's never going to make your your substitution actually helpful. So looking at what else we might be able to do, we could maybe say uh, u equals x squared, this piece right here. We could maybe say u equals what's in the parentheses, x squared plus one. Maybe we could say the whole denominator of u equals x squared plus one, all in parentheses squared. Um, we could possibly say u equals uh, one over this, one over, or one over x squared plus one, all squared. Uh, we also, just like we don't want to say u equals x, we don't want to say u equals the whole thing because that's not going to help us at all. So these are probably our four, really our only four options. Um, now, just kind of quickly thinking about what the derivative of all these things would be. The derivative of x squared and x squared plus one actually would both get us to 2x. Now, 2x directly is not, in the deri is not in this function somewhere, but it is differing by a constant, right? 2x is just x times a constant 2. So either of these would be fine options. Um, taking the derivative of this function, I'm not going to go through all of that. You would have to use the chain rule, and it would be quite a bit more complicated than just a constant times x. Um, and in fact, probably what you would find out if you were to go through that is it would be too complicated that if we replace this whole denominator with u, the derivative of u, if we made this whole thing u, there'd be too much stuff that it wouldn't be able to cancel out and simplify and give us an easier integral. So as a result, that probably wouldn't be a, a great option. And then this is going to end up very similar to this, where it's just going to be too complicated. You're going to add in too much stuff that it's not actually going to make the integral easier. So really what we can see from this though, is that making our u x squared plus one, giving us the derivative of that just being something else that's in our function differing by a constant, that might be a solid option. And if you were to try that, you might find that it works out pretty well. Let's think about this integration by parts example, just to, again, you just want to think about how you would start and at least see like, you know, is this even an option? Because we saw here by doing u substitution, this might actually be an option. This might work. But if we think about integration by parts, is this going to be an option? Like I said, what we could do, we could split this up into the integral of x times 1 over x squared plus 1 squared dx. So if we were going to think about applying integration by parts, we would need to call one of these pieces u 
and then call one of these pieces dv. Then we would need to find the derivative of u and the, deriv and the antiderivative of v in order to apply the integration by parts formula, which this formula, both of these formulas actually are formulas on my integral calculus cheat sheet. Again, if you want to check that out, there's a link in the description. But you know, when you're doing these integration by parts problems, you're going to want to generally, you want to pick your u to be whichever thing is going to be easier to take the derivative of and your dv to be whichever thing is going to be easier to take the antiderivative of. And, you know, sometimes there may not be one thing that's clearly easier to differentiate or clearly easier to take the antiderivative of. But what you also want to consider is kind of which of those is going to result in us getting the simplest pieces to then plug into our formula. Well, unfortunately, this piece here, whether we take the derivative of it or the antiderivative of it, it's going to be quite complex. It's probably not, I mean, it is possible. Um, if you really want to test that out, you definitely can, but I'm going to guess that it's probably not going to nicely cancel with anything, you know, whether we take the derivative or the antiderivative of x, right? If we say u is x, du is just one, the derivative of x is one. If instead we take, um, you know, dv to be x, then the antiderivative of this is going to be one half x squared. That's probably not going to end up doing any nice canceling out with the derivative of this or the antiderivative of this. So just based on that, integration by parts is probably going to create more of a mess than we started with. So it's probably not our best bet. Based on the fact that we had an option for you that might actually work, that's probably going to work pretty well. So just based on that kind of initial first step, think about what you do first, that kind of helps you make that decision. So I do have another example here just to kind of touch on those two pieces. And I'm not going to go into as much detail with this one. But again, let's just think about you substitution first. What could we make our u? We could make our u, again, we don't just want to say u equals t. That's never going to be helpful. So rule that out. We could say u is going to be 2t. What's in the parentheses there? We maybe could say u equals sine of 2t. Um, and then again, we don't want to say that u is the whole thing. So we don't want to say that u equals t times sine of 2t because it's not going to help you to make your u the entire thing. So we really just have two options for our u here. If we think about the derivative of each of these, the derivative of 2t is just 2. So if we made our u 2t, what's in the parentheses here, the derivative of that just is a constant. It doesn't have anything that's going to help cancel with this, this t. So that's probably not going to be very helpful. And if we make our, our u sine of 2t, if we imagine quickly just taking the derivative of that, um, we would have to use the chain rule, but the derivative of this would just be um, 2 times cosine of 2t, which, again, if we were to make our u this whole thing here, then there's not going to be the derivative of that anywhere else in our equation. There's no other cosine of 2t anywhere. So this probably isn't going to be very helpful either. So let's then quickly just think about integration by parts. If we think about integration by parts, where we want to break it down as the integral of u times dv, we can see pretty clearly we do actually have a product here. We have a t times a sine of 2t. So we could think of doing this as u equals t and dv equals sine of 2t, or vice versa. Right? We could switch these and see how that would work out. But we do pretty clearly have a product of two things. So, you know, there's a decent chance integration by parts might actually work for this. So just based on that quick first step evaluation, just thinking about the first step, what would you do first if you were to do this with u substitution? What would you do first if you were to do this with integration by parts? We get a pretty good idea that integration by parts seems like it's gonna be more likely to work out. So I'd probably proceed with integration by parts in that case and see how it goes. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button down below and hit that subscribe button while you're down there as well, because my next few videos are going to be going over how to actually integrate the examples that I just went over to show you how to choose between integration by parts and u substitution. We're going to be going through the actual steps of using these different methods in my next few videos, so be sure to come back for those. But if you want to learn some more about integration by parts or u substitution, I have made other videos about those topics already. Go ahead and click on one of those over there and keep on learning. Thanks and see you next time.